Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. Today's hot topic is Dwight Howard, Return Back to the Lord. Let's do it. Back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. I promise you, I'll reply personally. Dwight Howard, a former 6'11 star player in the NBA. Drafted by the Orlando Magic, also played for the Houston Rockets, the Atlanta Hawks, the Charlotte Hornets, the Washington Wizards, the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Dwight Howard has had a long traveled road in the NBA, and he will definitely be a Hall of Famer one day when that time comes. Now, this video is not about Dwight Howard, the future Hall of Famer and former NBA player. And it's not about his accomplishments on the court, but it's about the scandal that's surrounding him off the court that recently hit the news media over the past few weeks about sexual affairs he's had with transgender men. This rumor about Dwight Howard's sexual preference related to dating transgender men has been floating around the NBA for the past five to seven years while he was playing in the NBA. But Dwight Howard has vigorously refuted those rumors. But now things are resurfacing and coming out more into the light. Now, I remember when Dwight Howard was drafted in 2004 by the Orlando Magic after he was called to the stage to greet the then commissioner David Stern, uh, I recall Dwight Howard thanking God for blessing him to be able to fulfill his lifelong dream of playing in the NBA, just like a lot of other players who get drafted uh, in professional sports leagues. As a Christian man during that time, I was almost brought to tears to see a young man proclaim his faith in the Lord before a national television audience. Dwight Howard entered into the NBA as one who acknowledged his Christian faith, and he wanted to be someone who proclaimed his faith about Jesus Christ to his NBA brethren. In Dwight Howard's own words, he says, it was difficult to hold to his belief as a 20-year-old with millions of dollars. Dwight Howard also went on to say that his mission was to preach God's word in the NBA and to use the NBA as a platform for God. Let me play this three and a half minute video of Dwight Howard being interviewed on the Christian Broadcasting Network discussing his life as a Christian man in the NBA. After this video plays, I got some words of compassion, rebuke, and exhortation for Dwight Howard. I'm going to come to Dwight as a fatherly figure, as an OG to let him know that he can come back to the Lord. He can recover from this slippery slope of perpetual sin that he's been involved in for many years. And that God can and will forgive him if he repents of his sin and if he acknowledges he is outside of the will of God. God will receive him back into the fold just like he did the prodigal son. Here's the video. NBA star center Dwight Howard has dominated the paint for more than a decade, but his passion for basketball started at a young age. In eighth grade, God spoke to him and told him his mission field was the basketball court. From then on, I was like, okay, this is my purpose. This is what God wants me to do. But the mission wasn't easy. 
I sacrificed you know, everything, you know, going out to the clubs, going, just doing different things in high school. I uh, lost a lot of friends. You know, everybody felt like I was being stuck up or I didn't want to hang around. But you know, I was on a mission. To stay focused, Dwight started writing down the goals God had given him. Uh, where I write down every single one of my goals and I try to reach those goals. And um, that was my first goal, being the number one pick in the draft. He was selected in 2004 by the Orlando Magic. He says God put him in the NBA for one reason. To uh, preach God's word you know, in the NBA, use the NBA as a platform for God. When I'm on the floor, you know, let people see you know, the God in me, you know, whether that be me having fun, blocking a shot and smiling, dunking and smiling, whatever it may be, but just having fun and playing with peace and joy. Though Dwight is known for his smile on the court, it wasn't always easy to find joy. It's tough. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the easiest thing in the world, but it is hard. And you got to have people in your corner that can really push you and to really hold you accountable. And, you know, if you don't, you know, have that support system, there is times where you can't fail. There's times where uh, things can go south. You know, that's where you have to really rely and trust in God. His lowest point? happened when he was on his way out of Orlando. When I was in Orlando and a lot of the stuff went down in Orlando and everybody made me look like the, the worst guy in the world, a coach killer, a guy who hates his teammates, a cancer, all this stuff that I'm not, you know, was being said about me everywhere. And I couldn't turn on the TV without somebody saying something negative. I couldn't go to an arena without somebody booing because of this and that, and it was just all over. I really just wanted to give up. You know, I was like, God, I just want to sit in my room. You know, I don't want to see anybody. And that was probably when I was at rock bottom. For Dwight, help from the Lord was the only thing to get him back up. I just had to just pray for strength, pray for guidance, and just pray that you know, no matter what, you know, that you believe that God is there. And in a moment of prayer, God responded. He said, listen, man, if the whole world hates you, I love you. Always remember that. No matter what happens, you know, just smile and have a good time. When everybody else is leaving, when everybody else is saying, oh, he changed, or uh, he don't take the game serious, or he can't play no more. You know, God is like, hey, I'm still with you, and I'm not going nowhere. In the hard times, and in whatever lies ahead for Dwight's future in the NBA, the biggest lesson he learned is never let anything steal your joy you know no matter what's thrown at you no matter how hard you fall you will always have an opportunity to get up but don't allow your mistakes your downfalls injuries the media whatever it may be steal your joy you see folks Dwight Howard was raised in a Christian home and had some form of knowledge of right and wrong but this is the time that Dwight must come to the acknowledgement that he has sinned against God and the lifestyle he's leading and has led for many years is outside of the will of God. Dwight, you must recognize that it's not about the people that surrounding you right now, but it's about your fellowship with God and that communication fellowship right now is severed, which means that you can't come to God in prayer unless you first repent of your sins, which opens the line of communication between you and God. Dwight, you're like the prodigal son who is squandering his riches on male and female prostitutes and doing things that are clearly against scripture and is a violation of God's will and purpose for your life. But God is awaiting you with open arms with open and outstretched arms to receive you back into the fold, man. Dwight, you said in a video interview with Christian Broadcasting Network that you know God loves you. And you're absolutely correct. God loves you, man. In fact, while we were yet sinners, God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sins of the world. And that whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ would have everlasting life. At one point, Dwight, you recognize your purpose, but with all the riches and the fame and the enabling people around you, telling you what you wanted to hear and not telling you the truth, 
you got sidetracked by chasing these material things and these lustful things of this world, man. You see, the white the Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals. Which means either you're going to be an influence on the world to turn people from their evil deeds to God through Jesus Christ, or this demonic world is going to influence you back into the world. This demonic world is going to influence you to partake in its evil deeds. Dwight, you have five kids, bro. You're going to have to be an example to your children because... They are watching you, and they are mimicking you. You're going to have to leave a legacy behind, one that your kids won't be ashamed to tell people you're their dad and be proud of that. Folks, without stretching this video and making it too long, I just want to say, Dwight, that God did not create a man to have sex with another man. It's against the word and the will of God. That's not the purpose that he has established for you, Dwight. You see, in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, the word of God says, If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man, like with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act and are deserving of death. The white description also says in Romans 1, verse 26 through 27, that this is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the woman turned against the natural way to have sex with a man and instead indulged with sexual activities with another woman. And the man, instead of having normal sexual relations with a woman, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. And what that means, they suffered within themselves the penalty that they deserved, that's AIDS, man. The penalty that you suffer from having sex with another man is an abomination, and that penalty is sickness in your body. Men who have anal sex can't even have a regular bowel movement because they have to wear pampers because their anal walls have been stretched out and their muscles have been destroyed because of anal sex and they can no longer have a natural bowel movement. They have to walk around with pampers on. Men in their 30s and 40s. So man, it, it tells you that this is not what God has in store for you or anybody else who is practicing that lifestyle. Now Dwight, I'll say this man, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And God loves you with an everlasting love. And he gave his son Jesus Christ for you and all of the world who would repent of their sins and acknowledge that they are lost without Christ. Dwight, you and many others, just like me at one time, needed a life preserver. And that life preserver, Dwight, and anybody else who is without Christ that's listening to this video, that life preserver is Jesus Christ. Don't sink with the ship, man. Don't sink with the ship. This is your opportunity to repent and be accepted back into the fold. A sign that you are truly saved, your wife, is that you return back to the fold just like the prodigal son. God wants to receive you back into the fold. So all you have to do is acknowledge that your lifestyle has been outside the will of God and repent of your sins, which means you turn 180 degrees around from the direction that you're going now and tell God, I'm sorry, forgive me, Lord. And if you are a believer, then God says that uh, if you repent of your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Okay? That's for those who are believers who have gone astray. But God wants you back, Dwight. He wants to welcome you back into the fold. Okay? The, the Bible says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Those are for people who are believers. Even those believers who have a backslidden 
and Dwight, you're in a backslidden condition. And so God, again, is ready to receive you back into the fold. I believe that you are saved, but only God truly knows. But you have lost your way, brother. But God wants to welcome you back into the fold, just like he welcomed back the prodigal son. God won't condemn you, but he will convict you and he will call shame to come upon you because of your sinful activities. God will take away the hedge of protection from you, Dwight. And God will discipline you because he disciplined those he loved. The Bible says that godly repentance leads to salvation. So Dwight, repent of your sins, turn in the opposite direction, and lead a lifestyle that's pleasing to God, which means you depart from this world system. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, somebody who knows Dwight Howard, get this video to him. I would like for him to come to the show in person or via video. Because I want to encourage him. And encourage everybody who's going through similar situations as Dwight. To let him know that there are people who are true believers in Christ. That is not going to bring this up about your lifestyle over and over again, man, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I myself have sinned. You know, I myself have sinned and all people have sinned, so I can't point the finger at you like I've never done anything wrong, because I have. I have to repent every day, every day for something I think, for something I say. But see, I have a consciousness for repentance. I know when I'm wrong and I don't make excuses for it. I know what's sin and what's not sin, so I don't make excuses for that. But again, there are people who are true believers in Christ that are willing to help you recover from your sexual addictions and from your lascivious behavior and welcome you back into the family of God with open arms by way of God through Jesus Christ. Now, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody you know struggling in the LGBT community that desires to come out of that ungodly lifestyle. Because even though God loves everyone, God does not turn a blind eye to sin. God bless you.